Subnautica is a scary game. It doesn't bill itself like that, and it's not too obvious from the Steam page either, but everyone who's played it knows that it is a scary game. In some ways, it's inherent to its setting. We rejected the ocean millions of years ago and adapted to life on dry land, and now it rejects us if we try to return by slowing us down, putting hard limits on what we can see and hear, and making our fingers look really creepy. And that's before even thinking about all the life lurking in that space below the waves. Life that doesn't have any of those same physical constraints as us. Sure, you're more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to be bitten by a shark, but when you're actually in the ocean, and it's impossible not to notice just how helpless you are, well, it's a lot harder to wave away fears with facts and logic. Subnautica takes the way we experience the sea and makes a damn good game out of it. But creating a sense of dread isn't its only goal. You don't start out in the truly terrifying waters, those parts where you look down and see nothing but darkness. Instead, a spaceship crash leaves you in the equivalent of a coral reef, where the water is that kind of nice and friendly shade of blue you see in holiday pictures, and the sea floor is comfortingly never out of sight. The place is brimming with life and colour. Of course it would suck to be stranded here, but that doesn't mean it's devoid of beauty. And sure, there are some elements of danger, but for the most part, this bit of the alien ocean feels secure and welcoming. Subnautica is a survival game, and at the beginning that translates to addressing those most basic needs of hunger and thirst, which you can do without having to leave this little pocket of safety. After that's handled, you can go up the hierarchy of needs a bit and consider what tools might improve your chances of survival. But, the cosy reef might not have all the materials you need to make those. And pretty soon, you'll start hearing distress calls as other survivors from the crash call out to the waves and desperately try to find others like them. And it dawns on you that you'll need to start travelling further and further from the safety of your home. But you never actually have to. Subnautica is an open world game, so you can go almost anywhere at any time. And that freedom is never taken away from you at any point. But because it's also a survival game, it's very easy to resist those calls and stick to the areas you know and understand to more easily accomplish those survival mechanics, instead of venturing out into the unknown. Because the unknown is scary. It's one of the major reasons the ocean is scary. I mean, we know more about the moon than we do about the ocean. We know more about a rock hurtling through space 384,000 kilometers away from us that we only managed to set foot on 59 years ago than we do about the oceans on Earth, where today there are about 2.4 billion people living within 100 kilometers of one. And I myself used to be one of them. I grew up on an island where the sea was never more than 20 minutes away from a given place. I remember one day me and some friends decided to jump into the sea from the breakwater which is a really big stone wall built into the sea to block dangerous waves from getting into a harbour. The first time I jumped, I was really nervous. So nervous, in fact, I don't think I really jumped off the edge. I just kept running until there wasn't any ground below my feet anymore. There was a couple of seconds of falling, and then... My friends talking and laughing, the seagulls cawing, the wind... All the noises were gone in an instant as I plunged into some place completely different. It was a sunny, warm day before, but down here it was cold. It was that time of year when summer had started, but the sea hadn't actually had time to heat up yet. I looked around, but I couldn't see much, although there wasn't much to see, to be honest. Then I swam back to the stairs and re-entered my familiar world, having learned something pretty unsettling that I think Subnautica captures wonderfully. There's this concept in psychology of intrusive thoughts, which are basically unpleasant thoughts that sort of spring into your head unbidden. The French came up with a great way of describing a certain set of these thoughts. They call them la pile de vide, or the call of the void. Have you ever been standing someplace high and had the sudden urge to jump, even though you know you don't really want to? That's the kind of thoughts and feelings that belong to the call of the void. And while it might sound pretty strange, it's actually way more common than you might think. A study of 431 college students had half of them stating that they had experienced these kinds of thoughts before. That study suggested that rather than the existence of these thoughts being suggestive of any inkling towards actually wanting to hurt yourself, they're the result of a survival instinct sort of misfiring in our brains. Other common examples of the call of the void are to suddenly swerve your car into traffic, to jump in front of a train, or to jump from a boat into deep water. And that last one is so interesting to me because it's the only one that, if we really wanted to, 
we could probably do. You could never actually act on any of the other intrusive thoughts without serious consequences, but jumping from a boat into the sea? Sure, you'd get wet and have a bit of a shock, but if there's no storm and you're not alone, your boat's just gonna turn back around and pick you up again. In 20 minutes, it will be like it never happened. It's something potentially unnerving that we actually have the ability to go out and do. And that's what I realized after jumping off the breakwater. It made me realize that all the parts of the sea that are scary, like the unknown potential it contains, could be explored. I realized I could go to pretty much any point on that island, jump into the water and see what I could find. The unknown would no longer be this nebulous thing that forever mutates from one terrible thing to another in all its endless possibilities. I could go out and see it with my own eyes and permanently fix it to one form, be that good or bad. I only needed to make the conscious choice to go out and do it. And I think fully comprehending that it's all down to you and you alone makes that decision much more terrifying than a base fear of the unknown. And Subnautica gives that same choice to you. It builds an area you come to understand, a place you come to see as safe. Then it draws you out a bit and hints at the world to be discovered if you just venture a bit further and go a little bit deeper. But it's always you who has to decide to make that plunge into the deep. You're never forced to make it. Horror games tend to be quite linear, which is logical because that kind of structure gives the developers more control over how the scares work. It's like walking down a corridor to a closed door in Resident Evil. It's scary because you don't know what could be waiting on the other side of that door, but unless you just stop moving completely or quit the game, you'll always need to move towards it to progress. Subnautica takes that corridor, expands it to the size of an ocean, and fills it with doors holding potential mysteries all over the place. You then have to actively decide which door you go towards, and the fact that you have that freedom to go anywhere, in any direction, at any given time, to approach any of these doors, can just fill you with dread. I don't think there's any other game that uses the freedom of how you want to play to create terror in such an effective way as Subnautica. And I think what makes it even more effective is that it's not just an experience filled with fear. The reason it's not marketed as a horror game on the Steam page is because it isn't. Or at least, it's not always. Because the unknown doesn't always have to be a bad thing. At the risk of sounding cheesy, some of the most interesting parts of life are when we go out and experience something new, something we've never experienced before. Subnautica understands that while the sea can be a scary place, it's more than that. Yes, it's home to dangerous wildlife, but it's not all terrible, and seeing how that life moves and behaves and just exists in this environment can bring such a sense of awe and wonder and joy. That coral reef you call home at the beginning serves as proof right from the start of the game that while this world might be terrifying at times, it also has the potential to hold a submerged Eden. And it's this duality between the potential for danger and the potential for joy that makes that decision to venture out into the unknown one that actually bears consideration in the first place. It's structured around a simple premise. Any treasure or monsters here will remain where they lie. And if you really want to see the first, then you have to be prepared to also see the second. And I think that makes for a truly great experience. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.